Hi, I'm Rosie from the Seeing Data Research Project team. On Seeing Data, we research how people interact with data visualizations. You can find out more about the project on our website, seeingdata.org. In this video, I'm going to talk about things that can affect a person's engagement with a visualization. It's not always easy to look at and think about a data visualization. Lots of things affect our ability to do this. It's not just a question of the visualization itself or the skills you have, whether these relate to computing, statistics or maths. Other things matter too, like the subject matter or where the visualization is found. We talk about these things that affect people's ability to engage with data visualizations to help you understand that if you're not getting on with a visualization, it might not be because of you or the visualization. To start with, let's look at some examples. The world as a hundred people shows the people of the world as percentages grouped by gender, age and, for example, access to clean water. The global flow of people shows migration around the world in an aesthetically appealing way. Four Visions shows the lyrical themes that Queen sing about, divided up by who wrote the song. You can see that Freddie Mercury wrote a lot about love. At a glance, do you like some of these visualizations more than others? This could be for a number of reasons. Number one, the subject matter. The content of a visualization is really important. If you're passionate about the Tour de France, you might be more likely to be interested in statistics about cyclists and visual representations of these statistics. When you interact with a visualization, sometimes you bring relevant information with you, and this helps you to make sense of it. So if you're not interested in the subject matter, you're unlikely to take the time to look at a visualization about it. But this isn't always the case. For example, you might like what a visualization looks like at first glance, and this might make you feel like exploring it. This happened to me with bumps, bruises, and breaks. I'm not really interested in American football, but the dynamic image of the footballer and the big red circles drew me in by getting me to think about the impact of sport on the body. Number two, the source. The place that the visualization was originally located is important when it comes to deciding whether to look carefully at a visualization. We trust some sources more than others. For example, some participants in our research trusted visualizations which came from the University of Oxford because they felt that the University of Oxford brand suggested quality and impartiality. Other participants trusted the newspapers they regularly read and so trusted the visualizations in them. At the same time, some participants didn't trust visualizations that appeared in newspapers that they didn't trust or rate as quality newspapers. So the source or location of a visualization matters. Number three, beliefs and opinions. As suggested in the last point, participants in our research trusted visualizations that appeared in trusted publications, which fitted in with their worldviews. This tells us that people's beliefs and opinions play a role in influencing how and whether people take the time to engage with particular data visualizations. Some participants in our research said they liked visualizations that confirmed their beliefs and opinions. For instance, this visualization about media coverage of immigration led some of our participants to reflect more deeply on what they already knew the media to be saying about migration. But it's not just when visualizations confirm existing beliefs that they have impact. One of our participants was pleasantly surprised by the migration data that was in this visualization. He said that he didn't realize how many people in the UK were born in Ireland, and this changed his perception of UK migration. This suggests that some people might like or be interested in the data and visualizations that call into question existing beliefs because it gives them something to think about. Either way, you bring your existing beliefs and opinions to bear on a visualization, and they are likely to have an effect on how you approach it. Number four, time. Some visualizations represent quite complex data. Others have various layers and give the option to dig deep into the data, like this one about the quality of life in different parts of the world. Some include links to the data source, allowing you to check that the visualization is faithful to the data, as long as you can make sense of the raw data, that is. Some use visual metaphors that can be tricky to work out, such as this network map of how the video of Commander Hadfield playing Space Oddity spread around Twitter. So making sense of data visualizations can take time, and being able to engage with visualizations depends on the time that you have. Engaging with visualizations can feel like work for people who are not used to looking at them. 
On the research project, we found that busy people found it hard to make time for thinking about a data visualisation or to find the energy to do this work. As one of our participants said, it was all these circles and colours and I thought, that looks like a bit of hard work, I don't know if I understand. When time was set aside to engage with visualisations, such as in the focus groups that we ran, most of our participants enjoyed looking at them and were disappointed when the time came to an end. Number five, emotions. The first impressions that you have when you glance at a visualisation are important in determining whether you decide to spend time looking and interrogating the data. You might have strong emotions relating to the subject matter, the visual style or, or other factors. This visualisation of death rates in the Iraq war is powerful because of the choice to use blood red and to turn the bar chart upside down, giving a dripping effect. In our research, we found that some participants felt immediately confused when they first looked at some visualisations, and this put them off exploring further. But sometimes they were drawn in by the visual style. This happened for a few participants in relation to this intriguing visualisation of film box office receipts. It's useful to be aware of the way emotions can affect your reading of a visualisation, as it might help you to overcome initial emotional responses which put you off exploring further. For example, one research participant said that acknowledging how she felt about visualisations first, before moving on to what she thought about them, was a useful step. Number six, confidence. You need to feel confident in your ability to engage with and make sense of visualisations. Confidence often depends on your sense of whether you have the right skills. People who make visualisations sometimes say that people looking at them don't need any skills to do this. They think it's down to them, the designers, to make good visualisations. But in our research, we found that people need a broad range of skills. These can include language skills, in that you need to speak the language in which any text is written in order to make sense of it. Mathematical or statistical skills such as the ability to make sense of a particular chart type. And critical thinking skills are also helpful, such as asking yourself what has been left out or what point of view is being prioritised. But you don't need to be an expert in any of these things. Sometimes just a bit of skill is enough. We hope that this video and the other content on our Seeing Data website can help you to develop the confidence for doing just that.